Hello there YouTube, I'm Wheelchair21, and welcome to my show that is a work in progress. First off, one reason why I'm going to say it's a work in progress is the fact is, I'm not too decisive on what the name should be. I have three options right now, and I'm going to let the fans and viewers decide what it should be called. It will either be called, Wheels is Rolling, Wheels are Rolling, or Spin the Wheel. Now, the reason I'm giving the people the option is because, one, I'm not too happy with either of those names, but they just sound simple and work with my motif of being, you know, bound to a wheelchair and being a geek. And I think the idea is that it's going to be talking about, you know, how I have ideas and opinions based on either current events in comics, video games, cartoons, live action TV show based off these, you know, products that we watch and enjoy, as well as anime and tokusatsu. You know, it's just going to be a variety show of being a geek and whatnot. It'll be a show that's released like every Wednesday, and it's just supposed to be fun, entertaining, and whatever, you know? I, I don't know. But I want people to, in a sense, be able to contribute to the show where they can contribute what the name can be or shouldn't be. And like I said, we have those three options, which hopefully people will leave in the comments here on YouTube or on Facebook and Twitter so I can figure out what we're going to be calling this. Second off, I will be, you know, figuring out what topics are going to be the format that I'll be featuring, you know, regularly, or how, you know, I'll carry out the show, and so on and so forth. If people do go with the spin the wheel option, I might actually have it that on the screen there'll be like an actual real, like, you know, like almost like a Wheel of Fortune wheel spinning before beforehand when we start talking about topics and it'll land and it'll show you which one we're going to be talking about first, so on and so forth. So that's just a little taste on why people might go with option three. The other two are just supposed to be the idea of, you know, like the gears are set in motion kind of idea of, you know, we're going to go forward and just talk about whatever there is to talk about on the show or the episode of the week, you know, and just get the ball going. So first off, most of this news is usually compiled straight off of Hero Club and Hero Taku or probably a few of the other sites that we in a sense associate with or are friendly with. So one thing I want to talk about right now is we are going to have Transformers Robots in Disguise Season 3 finally air. It's supposed to air this coming Saturday, April 29th, 6.30 a.m. Now, I'm not going to get to see it right away. One, because I'll just be waking up to get ready to go down to New York City to see the Tamashi World Tour New York event, which I cannot wait to see. And hopefully, if I get home in time, I can record a brand new show for next week, or it'll be just pushed to, you know, Saturday afternoon, me recording, or Monday morning. Anyways... Season 3 looks great. We have the Stunticons, who are going to be, like, the main villains alongside Soundwave. We're going to see Blur from Rescue Bots join the cast. And the fact that B Bumblebee and his team are going to, like, combine together and become this legendary Autobot fusion looks impressive. Especially because Drift is this awesome sword that they have. He becomes, like, the power sword to their mecha. And I've been really excited for this for some time now. And I can't wait to see it. I know the toys are probably going to be a little lackluster and a little overpriced. But I'll try to see if I can scrounge some money up to get those. Right now, my real deal is still collecting Generations figures, Figuarts, and mini plot, and the occasional gun plot, or a nice book to read. <laughs> and now someone's going to probably comment, like, Project or Ben in the comments below. Wheels, you know how to read? Well, I must know how to read if I work at the website. Come on now and help found it. <laughs> Alright, our next actual trailer to talk about is the fact that Freeform is getting a Marvel show. Now, for a while now, we kind of knew it was coming. I think we knew Freeform was working to get a show, or they were trying to get a show on Freeform back before like any of the shows for Defenders were announced for Netflix. So a lot of people thought, what was it, Jessica Jones was going to be on there. A lot of people, for some reason, thought that, but it's not. It's actually Cloak and Dagger, and I think it really fits uh, Freeform's kind of style and the shows they go for. They try to be kind of CW light and still be, you know, family-friendly and still try to be dark and mysterious with some of their shows 
And I think this show might work. The only problem I'm seeing with the series right now is, as Ben told me, it's like 10 episodes for their first season. I think that's a little too short. I think that 13 to 26 is normally the best for a live-action 45, 50-minute show, you know, on primetime. That's normally the best, you know, episode runtime or or episode d- duration for season or amount for season that a series should have. But I'm really liking it. Most of the times I've read Cloak and Dagger, it's always been after years of them being established. And, you know, it's like, so they're these, you know, pretty decent superheroes. And I've often wanted to go back and just read more about how they got to, you know, here but I just never had the time, so I hope the series is a faithful adaptation for the characters. I've always enjoyed, you know, reading them when they've teamed up with some of my favorite heroes in the past and stuff, but like I can say, I'm interested, and I hope that, you know, the show does good so we get more episodes per season. (laughs) Our next trailer I want to talk about is Full Metal Alchemist. Now, Japan is doing a live action, and I've been in and out with being you know, hopeful for the series. I, or I should say movie, because one, Attack on Titan was bad. It was garbage, and it just wasn't good. It wasn't a good live-action movie. And now, like, I'm not a real fan of Attack on Titan. I've enjoyed the music composed for the series. I've been a fan of at least the initial concept and the idea of the manga and anime, But for some reason, I'm... I guess I floundered on the whole fad of Attack on Titan. And I'm like, it's decent. I just like the music. But the movie had potential. It's one of those series when you look at it, you're like, man, this could actually be a good live adaptation. But then I saw it, and it was just bad. With a Full Metal Alchemist, it seems like the studio and the company working together on it, you know, with the I guess the manga creator and the uh, publisher, they're being a lot more faithful. They're working on establishing what seems to be the first arc within the first movie. And, you know, the first arc is only like seven episodes, so we're not going to get that much out of this film, but I think it's, you know, looks decent, looks good. But then again, I could argue the Attack on Titan movie's initial trailers made the film look good. And then, like, by the time the movie came out or was out in theaters, all the TV spots and trailers for it were showing you how bad this movie was going to be. So, I say we gotta really give time to see where this thing is going, because we do not know how bad it truly could be. I mean, holy crap, it could be a whole lot worse than it's expected. And the other thing that... I thought was kind of funny about this week was the fact that, unlike our April Fool's Day joke at Hero Club, uh, Masakazu Ogawa, the producer of Gundam Build Fighters, actually tweeted on his official Twitter that one more special chapter is in the works and that it should be announced during Golden Week in Japan. So, we're getting, finally, probably that second OVA we were promised back before Island Wars came out. Now... I remember this fan speculation was that each OVA was supposed to be directly attached to the seasons of Build Fighters. Like, one would be directly on the main cast of Season 1, and the second one would be on Build Fighters Try. Now, since time has gone on, people have been more skeptical to believe that maybe the OVA that's in works is going to be based on Build Fighters Amazing manga or Build Fighters Hano. Now, honestly, I don't care if it's either of those. Like, I would love to see those animated in some shape or form. However, if they do decide to do, like, a one-episode OVA, I hope it's nothing like Island Wars was, to be honest with everyone. Um, The reason I don't like Island Wars too much is I'm not really a fan of the campy summer-esque specials that they just make where it's just, like kind of nonsensical in a sense it's like hey we're just gonna do this thing we're at we're at an island resort bad crazy stuff happens and pretty much brings us all together to be heroes in some shape or way or form now the visuals and the effects and the battles were amazing 
but I just I kind of hate how every OVA like that is just utterly predictable so like I wish there was something that actually builds off the story rather than just kind of giving us a slight pat on the head going it's okay here's something more and like a sugar cube like we're a damn horse that's just me personally and now the main course of the stuff that I want to talk about is the Ultraman XZ news because one reason is that first off when the scans came out I thought they were fake. Then they were proven to be real later on in the day because the early scans were just poorly scanned, poorly pixelated, poorly cropped, and it just looked bad. And then when I actually got to talk about the uh, scans on the podcast with uh, Jenner to Joker on Los Angeles de Tokusatsu, we kind of like, I guess, lampshaded some of the stuff and joked more about the concept of this Ultraman and what it could lead to. So Exceed is discovered to be the son of Belial. His series is set to premiere on July 8th. So that's three, less than three months from now. That's literally uh, about 60-something days. So yeah, almost 60, 70 days from now. And we found out he'll be using an Exceed riser, which kind of looks like a giant brass knuckle, and he'll insert Ultra Capsules that allow him to fuse similar to Orb. Now, the Ultra Capsules kind of look like the Monsuno Capsules from that really bad anime cartoon made for, I think, Canada and North America, just all of North America in general, and was marketed through Nickelodeon. And it just looks weird. It's a bad idea, but he does have four uh, already announced forms. Primitive, which is Belial and regular Ultraman. Burning, which is Ultra 7 and Leo. Acro Smash, Cosmos and Ikari. And Magnificent, Father of Ultra and Ultraman Zero. Now, I will say this right now. The Burning form with Leo just doesn't look that great. Like, the, the bodysuit looks fantastic. The head sculpt looks terrible. I'm not a fan of the crown. Then again, I've never been a fan of Leo's head in general. Acro Smash is amazing. It really feels like they borrowed uh, Hunter Knight Siguri more than U- Ultraman Ikari. I mean, they are the same character, but I feel like they borrowed aspects from that portion of his his lifespan or his, you know, persona into this fusion more than they should have of Hikari. And I do love it. It looks amazing. It's probably one of my favorite forms. And then Magnificent just looks badass. And it kind of sort of... Uh, references an old DCO armor that I had back in the day when I was like heavily into that game. So, I mean, it looks pretty good. It's probably like my second favorite form thus far. Some of the fusions, the concepts are a little weird on who they're fusing together, but hey, whatever. It's, it's at least a little bit different than the fusions we got when it came to uh, Orb. Baleo will actually be using fusions too. He'll be able to summon Skull Gamora, Thunder Killer, Batanium Zeton. Now, Skull Gamora is Gamora in Red King, which actually looks pretty decent. Has a weird kind of rabbit tusk ears now. And he kind of looks like a few other kaiju we've seen before. Not necessarily Gamora or Red King, but something that, like, in a sense, supposed to be sort of like them, even though this is the fusion of them. Thunder Killer, which is Ace Killer and Elect King looks fantastic. It's probably one of my favorite fusions announced. And then we have Batanium Zeton, which is my second favorite. Now, Batanium Zeton is King Joe and a Zeton fused together. The only things I could make references to is that this is literally Joe's wish of being a dinosaur. This is a friend of mine named Joe. He just loves dinosaurs and wishes he was one. So, yeah, Joe, you got your wish. You are now a dinosaur. You're a space dinosaur. But it also reminds me of the suit that was used in the stage shows for Balton Zeton, or Zeton Balton. And it kind of looks very similar to the concept art for that suit with how it's kind of designed and where, like, the uh, King Joe portions are placed onto it. And there'll also be supposedly another secret fusion of Ark Belial and Juggler, which, honestly, wow, that's just crazy. I think, like, me and the others sort of lampshaded the fact that it's Ark Belial and Juggler fused together when we were talking about it before, but now that, like, looking at it more, like, closely and more focused, that's going to be one crazy fusion. Like, damn, I, I'm, I'm trying to put that into my, like, 
mind like what could this look like but Christ that's gonna be crazy you know so we got that going on and then we also found out that freaking XZ is gonna have this claw called the XZ claw that's gonna be like his weapon of choice he's also gonna have like a belt holder to hold all the capsules and somehow you can use the Exceed riser with this new Ultra Zero, Z, Ultra Zero I Neo to allow Ultraman Zero Z, Zero to become Ultraman Zero Beyond. Now, Ultraman Zero Beyond just looks fantastic. Like the form, the best way to say like by the concept art makes it look like he's a Nexus form as Z, Zero. Like it's like Zero if he was like a Nexus suit almost. Now that's probably not what it's gonna actually be like when you get in the series or what it's made into a suit for the show but I'm hoping it's kind of like that because they've kind of hinted that Zero's kind of like an unordinary ultra like he's probably going to be like a god tier ultra if that like by the end of his reign or by the end of his run or by whenever they're not going to feature him no more since he's supposedly going to be working alongside XZ he's going to be like his mentor or his secondary Ultra similar to Agul is to Gaia and Hikari is to Mabius. So I'm just hoping that, you know, Zero Beyond is really cool and actually lives up to expectations because, I mean, he already has like a shining form, which if you've seen Tiga glitter form, this means like you should be like OP and a god. So Beyond needs to be like beyond level of like Tiga god and like level of Ultraman Noah god or Ultraman king. Like, he needs to be, like, the top shit by the end of this, because, holy crap, what the hell is going on? I mean, I look forward to it. I have a lot of questions, especially because, like, where did Blail come, Blail's son come from? Where did XZ come from? Was, like, he, like, how me and M Mucha, or uh, Joker, I should say, s joked about saying that he, he was created just as a yin to Belial's yang and vice versa, you know? Was it because Belial kept screwing up the universe so much they just felt like, hey, we're going to wrap up Belial's story finally, and we're going to use the fact that he has a son to, for maybe his atonement or redemption? I don't know, because this story with just Belial and Zero has been going on since, like, 2010. It's been on and off, and now we're finally getting closure, maybe? So... This is going to hopefully need to be, like, a well-written series. Like, I mean, this needs to go above and beyond Orb. Because right now, out of the last couple of seasons, Orb is, like, the standard. It is, like, the bar for Ultraman series, like, ever since, like, Ginga to now. It set the bar as being one of the best, in my opinion. And I know Keith Justice is going to throw a shoe at me because he wasn't too happy with, with um, Orb, but... I think it set the bar. Nevertheless, I just can't wait, and hopefully maybe I'll be able to get some roleplay from this season. I mean, I didn't really get much from Orb. I'm still trying to get my hand on a Dark Ring, but that's because most of my money goes to Figuarts, Minipla, and, like, food and paying the bills. <laughs> Nevertheless, like I said, Exceed, look forward to it. Those trailers I mentioned about, awesome. And we'll see what's going to go on in next week's episode, other than the fact that I'll be talking about Tamashii World Tour. So, before I close up this episode, like, I want to remind everyone, you have your choice on picking the name for this series. Wheels is rolling, wheels are rolling, spin the wheel. You can easily just vote on it by commenting below in the comments here, or on Wheelchair21's Facebook, or the Twitter. Like, just those areas on social media. Comment there, leave leave a like and subscribe as well as I want to give a shout out to my friend xben3000 Brian, or aka Brian Benjamin for his recent cosplay cafe with Zelaria Cosplay you can check that out at Hero Club as well as go check out Fighter Kaust's brand new series The Drop he's in about two episodes in and I'm only in my first episode of my series as well as check out Sound Out's The Soundcast coming soon to Hero Club, and I'll see you all, like I said, next week, hopefully with our dang frickin' title. Until then, just stay calm, and roll out. <laughs>